In this problem, a municipal utility treats groundwater to reduce hardness using an ion exchange softener. The untreated water characteristics were recorded during testing and are in the provided table. The softener reduces hardness effectively, but still allows a leakage hardness of 10 mg per liter as CaCO3 in the treated stream. To maintain corrosion control while also preserving taste, the utility blends some untreated groundwater with the softened water to produce a finished water hardness of 90 mg per liter as CaCO3. What percentage of untreated groundwater should be bypassed and blended with the softened water to achieve the desired finished water quality? The possible percentages are 24%, 27%, 30%, and 33%. So in this problem, the ultimate goal is to figure out what percentage of the groundwater can be bypassed during the ion exchange softener. That means that the first thing we have to do is figure out which of the parameters contribute to hardness in the problem. Hardness in water is caused mainly by two ions, calcium and magnesium. These are naturally present in groundwater and surface water, and they're the reason for that chalky buildup on faucets or the need for extra soap. So in this problem, we are going to be pulling out the values for calcium and magnesium. For step two of the problem, we are going to convert calcium and magnesium from milligrams per liter into milliequivalents per liter. This standardizes the concentrations based on each ion's charge and molecular weight. So to find the milliequivalents per liter, we have the concentration, but we need to go into the reference manual and find the equivalent weight for each parameter. In version 1.6 of the environmental reference manual, page 22 contains a table called common radicals in water. This is one place in the manual from which you can obtain these numbers. So the equivalent weight of calcium is going to be 20, and the equivalent weight of magnesium is going to be about 12.2. So to convert calcium, we will divide our concentration of 72 milligrams per liter by the equivalent weight of 20. To get 3.6 milliequivalents per liter. Then we can divide the concentration for magnesium of 18 milligrams per liter by its equivalent weight of 12.2 and get just about 1.5 milliequivalents per liter. The total hardness in this problem will be the sum of these two values, totaling 5.1 milliequivalents per liter. Now that we are halfway through our conversion, in step three, we can convert from milliequivalents per liter to milligrams per liter as CaCO3. In many water softening problems, hardness is reported as milligrams per liter as calcium carbonate or CoCO3 because it provides a consistent basis for comparison among many parameters. To do this, we can multiply the total milliequivalent per liter by CaCO3's equivalent weight of 50, also found in the reference manual. 5.1 milliequivalents per liter times 50 gives us just about 255 milligrams per liter as CaCO3. That's going to be the raw water hardness. Finally, we can apply the bypass fraction formula here to determine the percentage of water that needs to be bypassed in order to achieve the given finished water hardness. The equation for bypass hardness is going to be the finished hardness minus the leakage hardness over the raw hardness minus the leakage hardness.
The problem statement itself gives us the finished hardness of 90 milligrams per liter as CaCO3 and the leakage hardness of 10 milligrams per liter as CaCO3. On the bottom of the equation, we've calculated the raw hardness to be 253 milligrams per liter as CaCO3. And again, our leakage is going to be 10 milligrams per liter as CaCO3. We can ignore these units since they are all the same. And finally, we can see that our answer is 33%, or the fourth answer below. So the big points to this problem are understanding which parameters you need when thinking about hardness, converting those to milliequivalents per liter and summing them together, and then converting again to milligrams per liter as CaCO3 so that they match the units of the rest of the values in the problem. And then finally, using the bypass hardness equation to calculate the percent that should be bypassed. And that's it.